Greetings, it's the New York Thrifter here and I'm back with a stack of jeans today because I wanted to go through some of the brands that I like to look for when I'm out thrifting for denim. So I've got uh, different pairs here that are all different washes, different styles, and I want to go through some of the label tags so you can see kind of my thought process when I'm purchasing jeans. Um, a lot of these brands are specific to women, but of course they also, a lot of them have um, men's cuts as well, and I will try to go through that as, as I'm uh, looking these over. So one of the things that I particularly look for when I'm looking at denim is I like to get jeans that um, I can list on eBay for more than $20 and hopefully more than $30. I find that anything less than $20, I, I don't make a really great profit on because it is expensive to ship jeans. Uh, they're almost always over a pound, which means I send them in a padded flat rate mailer from the United States Postal Service, and that costs over $6. And since I do a reduction in my shipping prices for all of my buyers um, I tend to you know um, pay for some of that shipping so instead of charging them the full you know six dollars and thirty cents per package I usually end up charging them 399 which means a couple a couple of bucks comes out of my pocket as well to ship and so that's why I always try to find jeans that um, you know are worth uh, a good amount so this first brand that I'm looking at is Hudson Jean. And let me show you the back pocket. This is what these look like. Now there's a few reasons why I really like this jean. First of all, it is, uh, the brand is a very well-respected brand. It is a size 25, which is not a great size. However, it is a very dark wash with no um, flaws on it. Even when you're looking here at the bottom, you're not seeing any flaws. So these are in like superb condition. They're a skinny jean. For me, skinny jeans do really, really well. So as soon as I saw these Hudson's, I knew that I wanted to grab them up. So I do recommend looking into this brand. Okay. Second pair up I'm going to show you are Joe's jeans. So that's what the tag looks like for Joe's jeans. When I flip this around, you can see it has a little a little leather piece for Joe's jeans here. And here is the inner tag. Again, a smaller size, but it is a skinny cut. Uh, which is really nice. It also has some stretch to it. It has a little bit of spandex, and so and so you have a good stretch, which I really like. So Joe's jeans tend to do uh, pretty well on eBay. Definitely list them for more than twenty dollars. And again, just a, a skinny dark wash that does rather well. Now here's a brand that not everyone is for familiar with, but I suggest you get familiar with it, and that is Current Elliott. Uh, Current Elliott tends to do really well with a bit of the younger crowd because a lot of times it has different um, graphics and prints on them that make them very desirable. So for these, as you can see, it is a pink beige leopard print on these jeans. Um, not something I would necessarily wear, but I have a cousin in her early 20s that I think would really, really like these. And so they don't tend to have anything on the back to show you what they are. However, these list really well either on eBay or on Poshmark. You can generally get a pretty good return on these. And that's just one more thing that I want to talk about a little bit is um, I'm talking about posting these on eBay. Poshmark is another great uh, venue for posting jeans, especially if they are for the younger crowd. Um, they tend to do really well. So again, here is a little bit more uh, information on the tag about these current Elliott jeans. So this was a really good pickup. Okay, this next one is a Citizens of Humanity jean. Let me show you some of some more of the tags. Here we go. These are size 28, so that's pretty good. And here is the back tag on them. 
And you'll also notice a lot of them have this stitching on the back pocket. Uh, this has a little bit of distress. Now this is called factory distressing. What that means is they did this purposefully when they were creating these jeans. They put these this distressing on them. So what I do is when I have distressing on a jean, if it is factory distressing, that's exactly what I'll point out. That I will say that this, you know, that the jean was created like this. However, if, um, for instance, they are worn, so somebody wore them and, uh, you know, wore uh, some, some sort of distressing, or maybe at the bottom they were, you know, stepping on the hem and, and you have some distressing down here, you always want to put that on your listing. You always want people to know if there's any distressing um, on a jean, whether it be factory like this or something that comes from wear. So again, I'm gonna show you this Citizens of Humanity tag. And then on the other side, you're always gonna have the cut of the gene. So that makes it really easy to list because they tell you right here, um, you know, what it is and how it fits. So I really appreciate that. Okay, so probably a lot of you are familiar with just this gene. Seven for All Mankind. And there's been, you know, talk in the resale world about whether or not this jean is really worth selling. And the reason for that is not all cuts on this jean are created equal. Um, this is the Roxanne cut, which is not a particularly, um, you know, well, you know, sought or not a particularly sought after uh, cut. However, there's another one called the Dojo Jean that does really well. And so with something like Seven for All Mankind, they really are quite expensive in retail stores. And so that in itself makes um, reselling easier and for, you know, a larger price. If it starts out more expensive, then it can continue to hold its value. But one thing that you want to do when you are picking up Seven for All Mankind jeans is I recommend looking at this cut and then uh, going onto eBay and looking at solds to see if it is desirable or not. Let me flip this around real fast and show you. You've got seven here. So if you're ever looking at a thrift store and you're seeing this, I personally will pick these up because even the ones that aren't, um, even the cuts that aren't extremely sought after, you can still get more than um, $20 for. And so it matches my, my criteria. Here's the inside tag. There we go. Seven for all mankind. Now this has got to probably be my favorite jeans to sell. These are AG jeans, also known as Adriana Goldschmidt, and they are wonderful sellers. Um, I have a hard time keeping this brand in my store for more than a week, um, even if that. Now this is another brand that if you look at, they'll have the style of the jean right here on the waistband. So that makes it really easy to look up. I have yet to find an AG jean that didn't do pretty well online. So I would say you've got a really good thing going when you're when you're looking at AG jeans. Um, something else you should know that these come in uh, men's as well, um, obviously a different cut, but made for men, and those do even better. So a pair of women's AG jeans, I might go online and sell for uh, $30, $40, or $50. A pair of men's, I can list for sometimes $60 or $70 and get, um, get that out of it. So I very much recommend you checking out AG jeans. Here is on the back what you're going to see. Um, all of these tend to be a little bit different. I know the men's tend to be a little bit bigger of a tag here on the back. Um, one thing I've noticed about AG is this tag oftentimes becomes worn. And so some of it either flakes off or it gets a little bumpy or you can see this one is also faded. So this is something that when I'm listing in the condition note, I will note that that it is worn i've never had any pushback on that i think people are used to that that tag um after you wash the jeans becoming a little worn so i don't think um you know they're they're particularly upset by that let me show you this this inside tag made in the usa so i highly highly recommend you looking into ag jeans and if you find them for a good price while you're shopping these can have a great return. 
probably my second best seller on my eBay store is going to be not your daughter's jeans. So not your daughter's jeans. Um, these go into some really great plus sizes. So they start at zeros like most jeans do, but sometimes you can get up into, um, you know, the, the twenties with these 22s with these, and those can be particularly great sellers. And so any pair of not your daughter's jeans, what you want to do is, um, you know, first you want to make sure all the information is correct here let me show you what the back looks like there's not going to be any tag necessarily here on the back kind of what they're known for is they have a lot of stretch in them and um, that gives them kind of a bit of a legging feel but it also makes them very comfortable and very wearable the problem becomes with these jeans is sometimes here when people wear them they can stretch them out so there'll be bumps along here where the spandex will have started to um, you know stretch out and become um, uh, you know just a problem that you'd have to disclose so what I do is I always hold up jeans and I make sure that this is flat and that the denim still looks really nice and really pristine. So these would be a pair, these would be an examples of uh, something that is is not worn out or stretched out. So I really like these. Uh, these come, you know, not your daughter's jeans, come in dark and light washes, they come in different colors, they come in corduroy, they come in just all different styles, and I really recommend uh, keeping an eye out for these um, because they have a great resale value okay here's another brand that I tend to find a lot of um, here in the city and that's J brand these tend to be uh, pretty popular again a bit with the younger crowd and let me show you a couple more of the characteristics here this is a pencil leg again a skinny leg so that bodes well here on the back you've got the green stitching that holds in the tag for J brand. Now J brand, uh, they do a lot of pencil and dark wash for the younger crowd. They also do some, you know, leather, uh, which are of course really great sellers. I recommend looking for these because the resale value on them, you know, 30, 40, $50 sometimes. And so you can have a great return. Uh, let's talk a little bit about actually how much I, I buy pants for. So at my local at my local stores I will go in and and uh jeans are generally listed for about $7 per jean. Um some of the different stores that I go into will list them for higher. If they find a a brand that they sell particularly well, they might put a tag on it in the 11, 12, 13 dollar range. So a lot of times what I'll do is unless it's something that is spectacular, I won't buy um, you know jeans in in that high range instead what I'll do is I will wait until they go on half off day so in my particular area in the Goodwill for example on Wednesdays if you go in there are two tags that are 50% off and if you go in on Mondays then there's one tag that's 50% off and then they and then everything in the store every all the other tags are 25% off. So what I'll do is if I find some jeans that are good jeans but not great and they're listed for maybe $12, I usually won't get those. I usually will will back off and I will wait. And a lot of the jeans that I find, they tend to be a little bit in the smaller sizes, especially the, the brands that are maybe made for the younger crowd. And so they're not as quick to sell at uh, the thrift stores that I go to, which means when I come back on a sale day, I can usually find the pair of jeans that I was looking for and that I wanted. And so a lot of times I will spend maybe four or five dollars on a pair of jeans if I can list it for 30 or 40 dollars and then pay a few dollars out of pocket on the shipping to kind of subsidize that shipping. That's a pretty good return. I'm really, really happy with it. Another question that I get asked um, between men and women's jeans, which sells better? And I personally find in my store that men's jeans 
usually sell faster and they usually sell for a little bit more money. And I think the reason for that is men tend to find, you know, the jean that they like in their cut and their size. And then it's really easy for them to just order exactly what they want on eBay. They just type in their preference and they get what they want shipped to them. Um, and so, you know, women, we might want a couple different styles, a couple different types, a couple different, you know, brands. And so that takes a little bit more shopping and a little bit more looking where I think men sometimes uh, tend to be a little more brand loyal when it comes to jeans. And so what I will do is I will go whenever I'm thrifting, I don't sell a lot of men's clothes, but I absolutely make an exception for the jeans because I will be able to sell uh, a man's uh, a men's pair of jeans in a good brand um, for probably at least 30, if not 40 plus. And so I find the return on those because the jeans, the men's jeans in my thrift stores cost just as much as the women's. And so again, I can find them at four or five dollars usually and make a really great return on it. So even if you're not uh, necessarily a, uh, a buyer of men's clothing, uh, you know, walk through, walk through that section and see what you find because sometimes you can get uh, some really great deals with really great returns. Okay, so let's get back to a couple more brands that I wanna show you. These are two more high-end jeans that I wanna show you. And one of the reasons I wanna go through these is because these are two of the most uh, counterfeited jeans out there. And um, what I have here is I have first up True Religion. And um, let me show you the back here where you can see True Religion. These are True Religion jeans and these um, both men and women cuts, which is really great. Now, in the last little bit, True Religion has been losing a little bit of its resale value, at least what I've been seeing. It's been losing a little bit of its resale value. But you can still make a really great profit on these if you find them, um, you know, for uh, at your local thrift um, for the right amount of money. Okay, so... Let's look a little bit. These are an authentic pair, and I want to show you a little bit of the things that I look for. If I do find true religion, a lot of people are concerned that they are going to be faked. They're not going to be authentic. And so I'm going to go through a few of the things that I look for. And if you have any more questions, there's different guides online that you can look for where they walk you through step by step some of the... Um, the uh, hallmarks of an authentic true religion gene. So the first thing that you want to look for is you want to make sure that it has this tag in it where it has the name of the brand, the logo, the size. So that is the first tag on a true religion pair of jeans. The second tag has this horseshoe logo on it with micro uh, plastic stitching on the bottom. So that's the second tag. And then the third tag has more information about the jean, like the, sty the style and the cut. So you definitely want to look up the style and cut to make sure that that matches the True Religion's style and cut. Also in this middle tag, you'll notice when you flip it up, you're going to have an individual number. Each jean is going to be numbered. There's no real way to look that up. But if that number is missing, that can be a red flag to you that this might not be authentic. So that's what these tags are going to look like. Something else that you want to look for when you're when you're looking at uh, True Religion jeans is the shape of the pockets. They're not exactly triangular, so they're not cut straight. Instead, they have a little bit of a wave here. And if you can see that wave, that is a hallmark of these jeans. If you look at the back pocket, you can see that horseshoe design, and again, you've got a little bit of a wave here with the cut of the pocket. It is not a triangle. Instead, it is a little bit of an abstract shape. So you definitely wanna make sure that that, that, that is there. Uh, something else that I like to look, my, look at on my True Religion jeans are, if you look at the buttons, you're gonna have some branded buttons where if you look at that, it has the True Religion horseshoe, and then the letters. Something else that you want to become familiar with is the feel of a really uh, quality pair of denim jeans. These have a very thick feel to them, 
very structured and solid without too much stretch. That is going to be one of the things that I also am looking for. Um, you know, when people are paying brand new, you know, three hundred dollars per jean, uh, per pair of jean, it's not going to be a flimsy uh, fabric. It's going to be a a very nice. It's going to have a nice feel. It's going to have a nice weight to it. And so um, you want to, if you've never felt an authentic pair of these true religions, you might want to go to a uh, local out, uh, retail store. So maybe a Nordstrom's, go in, uh, feel them, see, see what, uh, what they're like. And that will absolutely help you when you find a pair at a thrift store. Another brand that tends to be faked a lot that I want to discuss is going to be Diesel Jeans. Diesel um, makes jeans for both men and women. One of the easiest ways to identify them is they have a tag right here on the pocket that says diesel industry along with a D in on red. Okay, let me show you. This is what the inside label is going to look like. As for the waistband label, these all look different. This one has to, it happens to be in kind of a white pleather, but this can look different depending on the style and uh, the cut. But one thing that you really wanna focus on when you're looking at diesel jeans is you wanna look at the inside tag. This is their Indian head logo, and around it, it says diesel only the brave, and so you wanna make sure that it has that on it. Here at the bottom of this tag, you're gonna see that microfilament uh, stitching again. This time it is metallic. And so you wanna make sure that it has that. Now, these are made in Italy. Not every single pair is made in Italy, but when it's made in Italy, you also have some embroidery here. This goes right over the inside label. And this is the Italian flag colors. You've got green, white, and red. So you can definitely check out for those. And finally, you're gonna see on the inside tag where it says MOD, that's mod number. So you wanna look at that mod number. You wanna make sure that it, uh, it coincides with the style and the cut of jean that you're selling. And so that's another really good indication whether these are faked or not. And then again, the feel of these jeans, they tend to be a really great denim, a thicker, uh, heavier weight that really holds up and lasts a long time. So that is diesel jeans. So let's go through a couple of mall brands. Now, when I say mall brands, um, you know, that's not necessarily a negative thing. That just means that they are ready, readily available in a lot of malls. And so these can be really good sellers, um, even on the secondhand market. So here I have a new with tags, free people. Originally, these were $128. You're going to notice this free people label here on the inside and free people as you know tends to be um attract a little bit of the younger buyer those boho hippie chic uh you know a uh, styled people again these are pretty small at 25 but uh they have really great resale value so i was pretty excited to find these new with tags now i want to talk a little bit about torrid Torrid is a mall brand uh, specifically made for plus size people. So you're going to find, um, you know, 16 and above all the way up into like size 26. And they do make jeans. Uh, these happen to have a little bit of graphic work on them. And also they've got some factory holes in them. Now, one thing I want to talk about when you do have actual holes in the jeans, you don't want to call these distressed anymore. These are actually destroyed when there is a physical hole in the jean. This is a factory destroyed jean and they can do very, very well in the resale world. It's a very, um, you know, uh, a look that a lot of people are after. Um, something else you might want to put in your title other than destroyed is you also might want to put um, ripped because that is something that people are looking for. So plus size jeans tend to do very well online. If somebody finds a jean that they like in their size, they might choose, uh, you know, to, to look on eBay and find it. Uh, Torrid tends to have a little bit 
better of a resale than some of the other plus size brands. I will find, say for example, Lane Bryant in jeans. And a lot of times I find that they don't necessarily have the resale value if maybe they're new with tags or they have, you know, especially large, maybe a size 26, I might end up getting them. But for on the most part, uh, I just find that Torrid for plus size has a really great resale value. Now, I actually don't have, these aren't jeans, these are shorts, so we're just going to have to pretend, but I didn't have a jean in this brand. But these are Miss Me, and Miss Me are sold at uh, the Buckle in malls, and they tend to be super blinged out. So you can see here it's got some of the fake, uh, you know, uh, rhinestone, or some rhinestones, it's got, it's destroyed, it's got camo on it. Just usually these jeans tend to have a lot going on. Now with Miss Me, they used to do a lot better than they do now. People are saying in, on the online forums and things that they're having a hard time moving Miss Me. I did look at comps or comparisons online to see what people were listing these jeans at, and I am finding that they still are selling. I just don't think they're as hot now as they once were, so people are kind of moving away from them. So instead of being able to get maybe $60 or $70, you're finding a sale price for maybe $30, which if you're getting a pair of Miss Me's for 4 or $5 can absolutely be the return you're looking for, but you don't really want to spend too much money on these blingy jeans when they're not necessarily going to have that return that you're looking for. Okay. Next up, I wanted to show you some J. Crew jeans. I particularly like J. Crew in its all of its forms. It's what I wear mostly, um, and I love it. I love the style. Um, again, these are going to be some destroyed because they have the factory holes in them destroyed uh, cropped jeans size 29 and I find that J. Crew holds up pretty well in in a resale value. Uh, you're not going to get rich on these. We're talking probably $30. But again, if I pick these up for $4 and that is a really great return. So I do suggest looking be on the lookout for J. Crew jeans. If you find some really nice ones, they can have a good return. And a division of J. Crew is made well, and I find that made well does particularly well in the resale uh, world, uh, specifically uh, on Poshmark. Made well does really, really well, and so these are a size 26, so a bit of a smaller size. These are again a bit for the younger crowd, these are some super skinny stretch jeans. Uh, Madewell in general is going to do really, really well, whether it's a sweater, a dress, or jeans, but they will sell pretty fast. And so if you do come across some Madewells, look, look them up. If you're on Poshmark, that might be a venue that you want to sell on, but on eBay, uh, you're going to do really well uh, on that as well. So check these out. I also wanted to go through a couple of brands. Now, if you're finding, if you know a couple of the really high-end designers, then if you find their jeans, you can, you can pretty much know that you're going to do pretty well with them. For example, these are some Tory Burch jeans, and these are colored jeans. They're in kind of a light blue gray, and they are the Alexa Craft Skinny. And Tory Burch, if you know, uh, you know, designer labels, you know that a dress or a shirt by Tory can be uh, very expensive and the jeans don't quite do as well. So, you know, a dress might be $100 for resale, whereas a pair of jeans might be closer to $30 or $40. But anytime that you see a designer label on a jean, you definitely want to check it out. You definitely want to see if you can get your money out of it. Another brand that I've sold in jeans before, Designer, these are Kate Spade Saturday jeans and they have a uh, polka dots on them. Now, Kate Spade is a designer brand. Her Saturday line tends to be a little, it's, it's the less expensive uh, of all of her lines. Uh, but it is Kate Spade. People are looking for these. These are designer. So again, if you see a name that you recognize on a jean, I suggest you pick it up, see if there's any comps, and see what you can get them for. 
Another brand that a lot of people are going to recognize as resellers is Eileen Fisher. If you are looking um, for Eileen Fisher sweaters or tops, then keep your eyes out as well for the jeans. Uh, again, this is a, a price point that is not as high as some of her other work. Um, an Eileen Fisher sweater in really good condition can go for, you know, 60 or $70, whereas a pair of jeans, again, is kind of probably in that 30 or $40 range, but still a really good find. And again, I've got some color jeans, and so these are in a green, and they're a great size. They're a size 12, which really opens up my customer base. A lot of people are going to be looking for these, hopefully. Now, I'm going to go through two brands, and these aren't necessarily something that I'm going to suggest that you particularly look for because they're very hard to find. The reason I'm going to show you these brands is when you run into something in the store or in a thrift store, and you might not recognize the name right away, but when you feel them or when you see the tag, you realize they seem to be something special. They seem to be something that you could, um, that's not, you know, your ordinary everyday pant. So with these first ones, I picked these up. And right away, I noticed some amazing details on them. So I was immediately drawn to these because they just had some embroidery and patches and staining and distressing that I thought, you know, this took a really long time for these to be manufactured. They're made out of a beautiful fabric and they are the cult of individuality. So what I did is right there in the store, I took out my phone, I went onto the app, I typed this in and I looked at solds. And sure enough, this is an amazing brand with a great resale value. I'm hopefully going to be getting, um, you know, over 50 or $60 for these. Um, at least that's what I'm going to be trying for. And again, I didn't recognize the name. I didn't know what the cult of individuality was. But as soon as I saw them, I kind of realized, hey, this is something a little special. They've got little details that a lot of brands don't. And so I'm going to look these up. So I always suggest you taking your time when you find something out of the ordinary to look up, even if you don't recognize the names. And you could get really, really lucky with a pair of jeans. And then there's a few brands of jeans where everyone knows about and you never really expect to find. Um, these aren't jeans. These are actually a faux leather, but they are mother pants. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Let's flip this around. Here we go. Mother pants. Now, I've heard of these before. I never thought that I would see them, um, but just goes to show watch, you know, videos on YouTube about jeans, about pants, watch, um, you know, uh, bloggers that are talking about really, really expensive pairs of, of pants and designers. And you too can find, um, you know, different, different brands that you thought you'd never find. I picked these up for $9 and hopefully I can turn around and sell them for, um, you know, more than $60 I'm hoping for, but we'll see. Um, there's, there's a bunch of brands where people will talk about online where, you know, it's kind of a, it, it's kind of maybe on your wish list, but you don't expect to find them. And then sure enough, one day you're going to walk into a store and they'll be there. So keep, always keep on the lookout for those, those really high end brands. Uh, keep watching all of the videos on YouTube and familiar, familiarize yourself with the logos and the brand names. And you're going to eventually run into some hopefully really profitable jeans. And those, of course, we were talking about women's jeans. I do want to go to a pair of men's jeans that I found that I was really excited about. These are called G Star Raw and they are a raw denim. And let me show you. There we go, G-Star Raw here in the back. These are men's jeans. I was really lucky to find these. I didn't pay a whole lot for them. I think I probably did about six bucks on them. They are gonna be a great resale. Um, when I went online, I saw that they were going for really well. Anytime you have this, uh, the, the raw denim tends to do very well. 
and I just want to show you that that um, you know there are men's and women's jeans uh, so I suggest if you want to get into the men's jeans what you do is you go online. well men's or women's you go online to eBay you look at the solds you filter what is sold for the highest price and you just take a look at some of those jeans that have maybe gone for you know $150 or $200 or even 90 you know 80 and 90 dollars and by scrolling through there you're gonna find brands like G star and you're gonna realize hey that's a really good deal if I run into that I'm gonna find it. So this is actually the last pair of jeans that I have uh, to display, but I did want to uh, briefly mention a couple of the jean brands that I haven't gone through or gone over yet, and uh, two of probably the mo the um, pairs that, that people are asking, well, why didn't she show me those, are going to be Lucky and Levi's. And there's a reason that I didn't show you Lucky's or Levi's, and that's because I don't have any. And the reason I don't have any are, these are two brands that are so hit and miss, unless you specifically know the size, the cut, the style, the, the everything about the jean, you can get burned pretty hard. Um, and the reason I say that is take a pair of Lucky jeans. If you don't have, you know, what is, you know, uh, sought after out there, you can spend, you know, four or five dollars on a pair of jeans buying it for resale only to realize that they go for eleven dollars online. And so you're not going to be making your money, you know, back on that eleven dollars. And so um, it's something that you have to be really specific about. Levi's is going to be the same way. Now, if you run into Levi's that are vintage, um, or you run into Levi's, you know, certain certain cuts do really, really well. But on average, you've got Levi's that are now selling at big box stores that just don't have uh, the resale value. And so you need to know very specifically what you're looking at. Type in the style number and the cut of that pair of Levi Levi's on eBay. Go to the solds. Make sure that you're going to get the return that you think you're getting. Because again, you're buying a pair of jeans and you're spending $5 for them and the return on it is only going to be $12. That's not going to be worth your time to get. So make sure that you're aware of uh, the different brands and what they do. And so I'm going to end this video here. I am planning on doing another video and that's going to be, um, you know, looking at a pair, what, what to look for in, in jeans, whether you should buy them, how distressed they should get, how to list them online, what are keywords that you should be using, how to measure jeans. Um, and if you're looking forward to seeing that, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you'd like that video soon. And um, I love to hear from all my viewers. I try to respond to every comment that is left for me because I really, really Really like the interaction. So thank you so much for watching today. I am the New York Thrifter and I will be back soon.